Hey, this is Nick Akel. I'm the coordinator of the Eastmont Computer Clubhouse in Oakland, and I'm going to show you how to do lightning slash electrical effects with Adobe After Effects. The first thing you're going to want to do is start up Adobe After Effects. The next thing you need to do is import your footage into After Effects. You can go to File, Import, File, and then go ahead and click on your video to bring it in to the project window here. All right, the video I'm working with today was shot with a flip cam. It is HD 720p, that means it's 1280 by 720 pixels, and it's shot at 30 frames per second. So what I'm gonna do is take this video, click on the none box down here, grab the video, drag it down in here. All right, now the video is in your timeline and your composition is set up exactly with the same specs as your video. Next thing we're gonna do is go to layer, new adjustment layer and when you click this a new layer will appear on top of your video down in this box so now that I have my adjustment layer selected by clicking on it I'm gonna go up to effect obsolete and then click on lightning you should see your lightning drop on top of your video this is the start point of the lightning and this is the end point the lightning will be between these two points all the time. So what I'm gonna do now is scroll through my video and figure out where I want the lightning to start. Right about here, I think I want it to start. So I'm gonna move the end marker to his palm and the start marker to his other palm. Then I'm gonna click the stopwatches. What the stopwatches do when you click on them is start adding keyframes and that holds the position in your video. An example, I'll click this arrow down here on my adjustment layer. I have an option called effects. I'm going to click the arrow on that. I have lightning that I added as an effect. And I can see my keyframes right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move to just about every second of the video and reposition the start and end point of my lightning. So as I move the video, you'll notice the lightning just kind of sits there. So at four seconds, I'm gonna grab the end marker and the start marker and move it into his palm. Keys will automatically appear when I moved it because I already clicked my stopwatches and set the beginning keys. Any movement changes of position or up, down, left, right are gonna automatically add keys for you. So I'm gonna go to five seconds, move these into position, six seconds. And just keep grabbing these and moving them. All right, now that I have set keys for each of the seconds, I'm gonna scroll back through my video and clean up the parts where it jumps out of his palm. So I'm gonna keep moving it and see where it leaves. Right about here, I should move these in. And the keys automatically set down here. Again, I'm looking for any part of the video where the lightning jumps out of his palm. Right there is a point. I'm gonna move that up on the end. Same with right here. I'm gonna move the start point into his palm and the end point into his other palm. And that looks okay. All right, now if I scrub through my video by hitting the space bar on my keyboard, it will start playing it. And I can watch and see if there's any spots that I missed where it jumps out of his palm. So far, so good. All right, that looked fine. I'm just gonna fix this one point here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and shut the little arrow on lightning shut the little arrow on effects. I'm gonna open up the transform options and what I'm gonna be focusing on right now is the opacity. And this is the way we're gonna turn our lightning off. Because I don't want it to just be floating in the air, I actually want it to start in his hand. So right where I want it to be, say right there, I'm gonna click the opacity stopwatch and that's gonna set a key right here. See, key set. 
All right, I'm gonna roll my timeline back just a little bit, and let's say right here, I'm gonna grab the opacity on the number 100%, and I'm gonna scale it down to zero, which means it's invisible. So from the beginning, there's no lightning, and from right here to this key, it turns on, and it's gonna stay solid throughout the whole video. However, I want it to turn off at a certain point, not float in the air like it's doing now. So I'm gonna do almost the same thing here. I'm gonna find the last point where I want my lightning to be. I'm gonna go down to opacity. I'm not going to click the stopwatch. If you click the stopwatch more than once, it will delete all the keyframes. So the first time you click it, it sets a key. The next time you click it, it deletes all your keys, and you do not want that. Instead, I'm gonna click this little diamond right here, and that's just gonna add a keyframe at the current time. Now that I have my key set down here, I'm gonna scroll to where I think the lightning should be gone. So let me scroll a little bit forward, and let's say right about here, I would like it to be gone. So I'm gonna do the same thing, go down to opacity, put my mouse over the 100% and just scale it all the way down to zero. Or I can just click it and type zero and hit enter on my keyboard. All right, so that should be good. The video looks good, it fades on, the lightning stays in his hand, at the end it fades off. Now I wanna render this as a video so I can upload it to YouTube, The Village, or just take it into Premiere and add it to part of a larger movie that we're working on. So the way to do that is composition, make movie. If you're using Adobe After Effects CS6, I believe they moved that option. So I think you can just hit Control and M on your keyboard, and that will bring up your render queue down here. So on the render queue, we need to set some settings for the video and the audio. So I'm gonna click the word lossless that's in yellow. The options for lossless will appear in front of me. What I'm gonna do is change AVI to H.264, not the Blu-ray, just H.264. I'm gonna click on Format Options. I have it set as VBR one pass, that's variable bitrate. I don't wanna use CBR, CBR is a constant bitrate. VBR is much better quality. I'm gonna have the target bitrate set at 10, the maximum bitrate set at 15. If I was doing full HD 1920 by 1080, I would set the target to 15 or 20, and the maximum to 20 or 25, somewhere in there. All right, so so far that looks good. I'm gonna hit OK. Now, if you wanna keep the audio that's in your video, it's very important that you check this box down here. If you don't, your video will render and it'll be completely silent. So if you wanna keep the audio, make sure you click that. And now the option to change the formats for the audio pops up. So we're gonna click that button and in your audio format settings, change the bit rate to 128, 160, or 192. Any of those three numbers is probably almost too much for the audio. So 128, 160, 192 will be beautiful. Make sure that bit rate is checked, not frequency, and click OK. Now just click OK at the bottom of your video and audio options to shut this box. The next thing we're gonna change is the output to. And this tells it where the video should render to. So I'm gonna click on the video. It's gonna ask me where it should go. I see my video that I used to make this. So I don't wanna keep it the same file name because it's gonna overwrite my video. So I'm gonna call it electrical and hit save. All right, not done yet. There's one last button to click and that is the button over here, render. Once you click that, which I'll do right now, it will start rendering out your video. And you'll see a little yellow line appear, and this is as it's going through your video. You should see your video playing up here too as it's going through it. Once this yellow line reaches the end over here, your video will be rendered and you should have a clip sitting in the directory that you can put on the Village YouTube or throw into Premiere or some other video editor. And that's how you do electrical effects. And here's the final rendered video. I also added some sound effects. Let's take a look. Thanks for watching.